I'm going to go over some interesting things that are happening in the market and compare it to things that have happened over the last 10 plus years. And also, I want to give you some good ideas on how to really change your business plan, things that you can do now right now to help change what you're doing to market yourself, to stay in front of people and to get things going. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to go over what I feel is going on in the market, but I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, I have 28 years of experience in watching uh, very uh, successful uh, other brokers that I connect with and talk to has been in the business many years. I, I watch uh, real estate broadcasts and news. And one of the people that is most important that I watch and listen to is uh, the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. So any realtors watching this at any time, if you ever get time, please, you should go and search any of our website. Uh, National Association of Realtors website or, and look up uh, Lawrence Young, uh, Y-U-N, Young, Lawrence Young. And he has been with uh, uh, NAR for uh, as long as I've been a realtor, as long as I know. And he definitely was there in the middle of all of this in 2008, 2009, 2010. And he's he's basically probably the, the, the smartest uh, economist with real estate, where real estate has been and where it's going. So I'm going to quote some of the things that I've uh, watched in some of his podcasts in the last few days. And so one of the things I'm going to go over is what I feel the market's going to be doing over the next few months and what we feel over the next year. Or when I say we, I feel that some of other economists and some other brokers and and leaders in real estate. So uh, the difference is, uh, a lot of agents have been asking me every day. I've been on the phone. My, if my voice sounds a little hoarse, it's been I've been talking more in the last week, uh, nonstop, every day, all night long, helping agents and and walking through things and ideas. So sorry about my voice today. But uh, the market today is, for real estate is pretty strong. It's stronger than it definitely was 2008. And what we're seeing now, this craziness in, in the world and in our economy and the coronavirus is something that is affecting everybody. 10 years ago when uh, the Great Recession really was real estate related, we, we as in real estate, we kind of created it. We were in the middle of it. This is not uh, this is not a real estate recession right now. This is just a global e economic thing. But the one thing is today the home the home uh, the inventory is low. Actually, today it's about nine percent lower the inventory than it was a year ago. Uh, so the inventory is low. Ten years ago, we had an overabundance of houses. They overbuilt, uh, and we had an a, a oversupply, which plummeted the uh, values. And also, because of the mortgage uh, problems and the banks uh, were having problems, and, the, and any of the realtors out there that went through it understand it was hard to get people loans back then. And the interest rates, they didn't act fast enough in dropping interest rates and making and the loan programs open up to everybody. They really strict loan guidelines. So now the loan guidelines are, are a lot better than they were right after when the recession started 10 years ago. There's a, a, a lower supply of houses. So we feel and that I feel, again, my opinion, I'm, I'm, that's my <laughs> I'm making sure that this everything I'm saying here is what I feel in my opinion. And I can't you know uh, predict the future, but I feel that the home values will stay there. The home values will stay there. They're not going to drop 30% uh, in the next two, three months. Uh, so that's a, a great sign of that. Uh, we don't feel the industry in the, the inventory is going to change much. It might actually lower or slow down over the next few months until everything uh, is is uh, safe and ready for everybody to go back to the, the normal or new normal. So inventory might be even lower. So, But the one thing is, is that uh, the real estate industry in, in any economy and that what we went through uh, 10 years ago is that there's always going to be people buying, there's always going to be people selling, and the economy, the market is individual for everybody. Example, I just give 
this example a million times a day to people is that if you have a family and they have secure jobs, no matter what the economy is or what's happening out there, if, they, if they're not relying on their uh, retirement account and their retirement plan to take out money to buy a house, if their retirement money is something that's really set aside and they're just watching and, and over the next you know, 10 years plus, it's going to go up and down and they have savings and they have to move for a job or they they uh, have a larger family or whatever, whatever need they have to move or want to move, they're going to move. Uh, so no matter what economy, you've got to remember the market is individual for each person. We saw this Back 10 years ago, people still bought, people still sold, they have, they had to. So the economies, remember, it's all individual to his people. And then also it's all uh, individual for the agent because you are in control of your business. The market doesn't control your business. The market controls the amount of opportunities to get business. So there's going to be people out there. So if there's less houses for to set, sell uh, the rest of this year or part of this year, then there's uh, a little bit more work our agents and your agents have to do to get that business. If there's, there might be actually because of the economy and the situation, there might be more buyers out there. There might be situations, remember, just because uh, there's something uh, terrible that happens in the world or the economy might make people move or have to move. Example I use, I've uh, been using every day is people might want to get out into more rural areas. They want to be around a lot of people. Who knows if, that, if that's a case. Maybe in a few in a few months from now, right now, we have a lot of people that are still employed, but working from home. Imagine there's a family right now, kids are home uh, and might be in your own house right now. Kids are home, both parents are home, and everybody's got to do schoolwork and uh, work at home and there's no room, there's no office, <laughs> there's no room and they're all working around the kitchen table. There might be families out there right now, you might be one of them going, wow, if if we want to, if our jobs ever want us to work at home or we could work at home more often because it might happen a lot. I think I see that is going to, I really feel it's going to happen a lot in a lot of industries, a lot more people are going to work at home. Uh, they see it happening and, and people are going to go back to work and go, can I work more at home? It, was, it wasn't so bad other than what was going on in the world, but working at home was nice. Now they might need want a bigger house they want, where they want that office or they need space uh, because uh, they, if the kids are there, everybody's there trying to do homework and work. They need one extra room or a basement or something. They might need a bigger space. So I, I bet uh, there's a lot of people out there that say, wow, we need a bigger house. And with the interest rates being lower, uh, the, the lowest maybe it's ever been in history, that that might be a good time for people to move. And also when unfortunately on the downside of things is when people lose their jobs. Sometimes people have to get out of their house. They, they bought a house a few years ago because of their job and things. And then when they find out that they can't go back to their job or they have to find another job that's lower paying maybe, you know, again, I'm seeing this when we don't like to see these things happen, but sometimes now they want to, or they need to downsize. They need to find a smaller home, a, a less expensive house, lower their payment and sell the one they're in. But the good news is that we feel the value will be there. We saw this 10 years ago where people were lost their jobs and bought a house three years ago, and all of a sudden, their, their, the value of their house came way came at way lower than where they were at uh, when they bought it just three years ago. We hope, and I hope, that that doesn't happen. So, if a few months from now, if someone bought a house three or four or five years ago and needs a downsize, I'm hoping that value is still there. Uh, it's, it's not going to come down thirty percent in three or four months like the stock market and people can sell. So. Remember, the, the point I'm making is that the economy over the next few months, no one knows exactly where everything is going. We feel it's obviously it's going to slow down. It's going, there's going to be negative effects on the complete economy and in, in, in the housing. It definitely is going to slow down. But when will it start picking back up? We feel that over the next uh, two to three months, it'll probably be slow, slow down. As soon as everything goes back to, well, like I said, normal, the buyers will come back out, the sellers will come back out. Uh, there might even be more activity than we would have had 
for uh, just the normal year because it sparked new buyers, sparked new sellers just because of things. So if someone's looking to buy or sell, still has their job, they're still ready, and nothing changed with them personally, financially, they're probably going to be out there buying and selling a little bit later this year. Then all the things that are happening in the world might add up to more buyers and sellers. So remember that. Stay in touch with people. Reconnect with people. Start going through your database and going through and, and finding out, you know, maybe kind of painting a picture together of who you put in which house and what kind of uh, situation they were in their lives. Maybe they just have uh, grown their family. Maybe they're ready to retire and their family, their kids are out of the house. Again, housing is all based on what is happening. And now I'm going to explain my opinion about what's great about the state of Ohio uh, in Northeast Ohio, where most of you are based out of is that, and I, again, I'm going by when I talk to my broker friends that are all across the country with Century 21 and that are many different markets all over is that here in Ohio, which is great is we have those mostly normal buyers. We have buyers that are buying and selling because they want to and have to for their own personal use. We might, some of us out there might have some investors that are looking to buy and fix up and, and flip and, and rent out to other people. We're not uh, a vacation capital of the world. This is not uh, sunny tropical Cleveland and I don't have many agents that are going, wow, all my buyers are vacation home buyers because they want to vacation here in the wintertime for in Cleveland. That doesn't happen, but in other markets that happens. So when the economy comes down, they get affected more than we are up here because all of a sudden the people that were going to buy vacation homes, second homes, retirement homes, uh, maybe because the economy and the stock market comes down, they just don't have the funds or just don't want to risk the funds to buy that second home or that vacation home, or they're not ready. Or when people uh, have their less in their savings or less in their stock market in the retirement plan, they're like, okay, we're going to put off retirement now and we're not going to move and, uh, and we're, we're not going to buy that second home. So uh, that's a good thing. I, in my opinion, a good thing. We're always pretty steady here of the normal business of what's happening in real estate. People buying and selling because they need to. They're starting family. They're getting out of their parents' house. They're graduating from college. They're downsizing. They're retiring. The normal things that happen in life is 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 the is really what our market is all about here and that will always continue to keep going and it's not completely market proof but it's definitely a lot stabler and stronger than some other markets across the, the country there so now I'm going to just give you some about five things that you kind of should be focusing on now different than you probably were thinking at the beginning of the year so one of the things is changing up your marketing a little bit. Um, right now, people are might not be thinking about buying or selling a house, so you can't just prospect like you used to. You really got to reach out to them just to let them know that you are there for them if and when they're ready, if you, they ever need anything or they know anybody that needs anything. You've got to make sure you're you're touching base with people. If you're under quarantine, which we all should be, if you're under quarantine, you have time to do this. And guess what? You know where most of the people are, your past customers and clients and people you know, they're at home and in quarantine too. It's a perfect time to not bother someone because uh, they're at work or in the middle of kids going to sporting events or going to things. They're at home. They, you could have actually probably connect with them and have a normal conversation with them or FaceTime or and, and get to know your customers. You might have the time, time to reach out and change that to show that you're there for them. Also remind them that you could help connect them to other financial people like uh, if you if you have in your database a financial planner or a or uh, a uh, loan officer that could help them refinance and lower their payment. So be their resource for other things, not just buying or selling a house. So make sure you have a database of some other people that could possibly help these people to see what they can do. So you're one of their trusted resource in real estate. Show them you have connections in other places. Also, you've got to make sure that you're uh, you are 
focusing on the, when you're negotiating on current transactions or you're about to have a new sale, there's a lot of things going on and moving parts in people's lives. So you got to be very careful and be empathetic about what's happening and making sure you're kind of walking on eggshells with everybody a little bit because you never know. The little stress out of buying or selling a house could spark something that's happening at home or, or, or uh, health-wise. So we really got to make sure we really connect with our buyers and our current buyers and sellers. And if they're still buying or selling right now, is that you got to watch out. Make sure they're they're that you're you're connecting with them, that you're communicating with them, you're you're keeping it down a level and keeping the the motions down as much as possible. Because one little thing, and 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 I know the agents watching this probably have had clients out there that it's more of an emotional thing. You just don't know what's happening in their life, and that right now people are at a. Uh, a high, high, high stress. So try to do your job as their trusted real estate advisor while working on the transactions. Keep that stress level down. Do the research for them. Do do whatever makes their job their lives easier. Make the calls. Make the connections with their inspectors, the title companies, the the lenders. Be make sure you're all encompassing involved. You know, if you can, don't just send them. Call the loan officer. Call the title company. Call your inspector. Help them. Make these calls for them. Make their life easier. You're supposed to be doing that anyways, but this is a time where you need to step it up even more. Also, make sure you have the mindset. You got to be tough for this because people might, I've already had this uh, several times this week in helping agents and, and because they have clients that just went off uh, just emotionally on them about a, not what anything the agent was doing about the emotion of what's happening in there and remember that it's not you if you're doing a good job and you know you're doing a good job and if they for some reason whatever's happening the negotiation between the buyer and seller uh, the inspection didn't go well they're they're financing uh, this is a big thing now a lot of uh, lenders are asking for more and more documents and and more verification and just, you know, after days and days of send this pay stuff, send this bank send it just sometimes drives people nuts and they get crazy and they just, they just, their emotions go over the top and you have, to, it's your job to bring them down and help them through that and reach out to the people that, that, that need the help. So example, again, loan officers, be in connection with the loan officers, go, please, I have a good relationship with my client. If there's anything that they need that you're not getting through them, please let me, because sometimes we have loan officers that are great, with our clients, some that are not don't mix that well with their clients personally. So if you have a better personal connection with them, maybe you should be that contact person in between. That's a suggestion there. Uh, technology, you got to start using your technology. I don't. I really don't know why we don't use it more uh, in regards to FaceTime, virtual tours. Uh, uh, I have a lot of agents call me going. I got buyers that want to go out and see houses and they want to be safe. You know, connect with technology. I have some buyer agents going out there with their FaceTime or with Skype and walking through a property by themselves in, in, in the house alone while their clients are at home, safe and sound with their families and showing them and walking them around a house. Use the simple technology that pretty much we all know to show houses. Uh, and, and I see more and more videos coming up uh, from agents on uh, doing a virtual tour and doing uh, walkthroughs of a house and putting that on the listing and sending it to other agents so they could get that to their clients. And also, you, there's agents starting out there trying to write up contracts and asking sellers to accept contracts with a contingent of seeing the house in person. Uh, you can do that. Of course, talk to your broker, your manager, or your owner of your office, or whoever's in charge to go with your company policy and suggestions on how to write up an addendum to make that part of the, the, the process of seeing the house and physically be able to go through the house because we're going to see a lot of more buyers wanting to buy houses sight unseen just from photos and from videos and how to work that in there. But talk to your broker, talk to your manager and how that works. And then lastly today, I'll go over, this is a time if you're at home under quarantine, it's time to start taking some so just freshen your skills, take some classes. If you're with an office that has some online training with uh, you know, any of uh, the major brands will have uh, online training and live classes online and virtual classes. If you have the time, start 
spending some of this time to take some classes. Uh, uh, the NAR.org, our National Association, excuse me, National Association of Realtors has a great website with lots of classes on there. Get a designation. Do something to better and hone your skills up during this time. So there's plenty of things. One of the main things I tell every agent, especially when uh, they're calling, I'm under quarantine and my buyers don't want to go out right now. Sellers are not sure what they want to do. And I'm kind of in limbo with some things day to day. I'm like, in this business, there's always something to do. There's always someone to contact. There's always someone to prospect. There's always someone to reach out to. There's always a class to take. There's so many resources online. As long as you have a, uh, a smartphone and a internet access and a, uh, a laptop, you're, you have something to do 24 seven in this business. There's, you're never, there's never nothing to do unless you're just not thinking of that. So, so reach out to the people in your office, reach out to other agents to see what they're doing, especially make sure in this time you're reaching out to agents, uh, just on a emotional level and how to deal with different downturns in uh, the market and the economy reach out to agents that have been in the business 10 plus years. Because right now, half the agents in real estate have not been in business more than 10 years. So that means half the realtors out there have never seen a downturn in real estate other than their personal business up and down, just but an overall economy. Obviously, none of us have seen anything like this ever, that's for sure. But I'm just saying anything even close to a downturn economy most agents or half the agents have not even seen something like this. So if you need some support, reach out to someone who's been there, who's been through something uh, that's happened in the economy. You can even reach other agents that have been in the business like myself, 28, 30, 30 plus years have been through interest rates in the 10, 12 percent and the unemployment in the 10, 15 percent and the, and all of that. You, if you really want to learn about the history of real estate because it's all cyclical, it all is ups and downs. And if you want to talk to someone on how they've handled it, how they've handled their business, I know if you talk to enough agents, you're going to call, you're going to contact some agents that says, when the market or the economy was down, my business was even stronger and I had more business because it's personal to you. It's not, don't let the economy dictate how much business you do. So that's it for today. Remember, use me as a resource. I'm here for all agents. I talk to agents all day long. Sorry if, if you get me at the end of the day <laughs> or in the evening. My, my, my voice might be a little lower, a little hoarse, but I'm happy to help in any way I can, especially during this whole, this very very tough time that everybody's going through. Uh, and um, I'm here as a resource for that if you need that. So that's it for today. Please, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, hope your family and everybody close to you is doing well too. Have a great day and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.